If there's anything for me to get hyped about, it's an anime strategy game from Bandai Namco. I've loved playing Super Robot Wars T and V, and I couldn't wait to get my hands on SD Gundam G Generations Cross Race, despite the mouthful of a name. Does it live up to my expectations? Let's find out. The story for this one is a bit all over the place, not in terms of messy narrative, but the fact that there are many, many different story threads for each of the Gundam series involved in this game. At the beginning of the game, you're asked to choose which series you want, and you can see how many stages there are, and there are a lot. Now, I will say that the stories to this game are pretty much only accessible to fans of the series. There's no real soft introduction to the setting, story episodes, and the barrage of characters thrust upon you. It's not like Super Robot Wars, where you can like kind of wriggle your way into the story and get introduced well enough to the characters. This assumes you're already aware, and that's alright. I'm not criticising it for it, but it's something that you should be aware of. I'm sure fans of the series will thoroughly enjoy what's on offer here. There are so many characters and series for you to enjoy. The series SD Gundam G Generations, they are strategy RPGs similar to their sister titles Super Robot Wars, which if you followed our channel recently, you will know that I fell in love with this year. One of the quirks of that particular series, at least these days, was that it was deceptively simple. It showed you dozens of figures for stats and potential damage and things like that, but in actuality it's pretty basic. G Generation Cross Race is decidedly more complicated, at least to my uninitiated eyes. There are more systems in place, you have more control over what's going on, more customization, and in all honesty, I felt overwhelmed, but in a good way. If you felt Super Robot Wars was too simple, this may be the perfect remedy for you. When you boot up the game, and you're on the main menu, and you just think, oh god, what have I let myself in for? That's the kind of game some strategy and anime fans love, and so perhaps in that regard, they know their target audience. Whichever scenario you choose in the story mode, you're greeted with a ton of story followed by the meat of the gameplay, turn-based strategy goodness. It follows the same battle flow as Super Robot Wars or something more relatable, Fire Emblem, whereby you move all your units first, do all the attacks available per unit, use skills, etc. Then you end the turn and then your opponent does all their jazz. Uh, that's never been my preferred system in strategy games unless you're setting up chain reaction combo thingy-mabobs, but that's just personal preference and I do still enjoy this. As you control your Gundam or motherships, you target enemies with a nice variety of attacks. Unfortunately, due to the cohesive nature of the series, most of the attacks look quite familiar. There's rarely the unique variety that Super Robot Wars has to offer, but my word, it's still awesome. It's a Gundam fan's dream, seeing them dodge and weave and eventually get blasted by laser bolts, rockets, or the ever so satisfying blade. There are more hands-on support mechanics here, you can often choose if you want support from your nearby allies, even choosing their attack. You can even ask them to take a hit for you if your targeted unit is running low on health. Particularly fun is the raid mode where you can ask ally units within range to charge together for an attack. Seeing four Gundams swoop and charge to the enemy is a real thrill. The majority of the goals for each stage is to wipe out the enemy, but there's usually always a not-so-secret secondary objective which will open up new opportunities for greater rewards. If you complete these secondary goals, then new foes will join the fray, often more powerful, but you can reap greater rewards, bigger XP gains, as well as units being able to learn new abilities if they defeat one of the special enemies. There's just a whole lot going on here, and it's difficult to know what to talk about and yet still keep this review a manageable length. I apologise for comparing it to Super Robot Wars so much, but they are basically sister series and are both vying for your import attention. At the end of the day, I'm going to judge this one on its own merits, but I think comparisons are important for you guys to know which series is more your style. What was immediately clear is that Crossroads is a much tougher game than the overly easy Super Robot Wars games. Not that it's really difficult on the normal setting, but it will certainly make you think a lot more about your unit's safety. I can only imagine the two higher difficulties will be a nice test of your thought processes. Enemy units hit hard and don't pull any punches. Accuracy also seems far more even, it's just more balanced. There's no one-shotting everything here. There are loads of characters, plenty to be unlocked either by capturing them from the enemy team, or using guest characters so much that they'll join your party permanently. You can form teams either with a mothership or just as a squad of Gundams, and I found this to be the least explained thing out there. You can build your own ships, Gundams, assign pilots to wherever you want, but I think the interface and explanation as to what is going on, and what even the advantages are for doing it, made me very anxious to even bother with it. 
What the game gives you feels comfortable enough, and it's this part that I truly felt I was over my head and completely turtled in on what this tantalizing feature had to offer. I've pretty much ignored it so far. Are you enjoying the review? Well, if you are, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel to get all our awesome Switch content, including reviews, weekly features like bargains and what games are releasing every week. Plus, once we get to 50,000 subscribers, we'll be giving away a Nintendo Switch Lite plus a copy of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening to one of you, so it's worth a subscribe for that alone. Plus, we're lovely. Visually, Crossrays may be slightly less appealing than the mind-blowing Super Robot Wars series. It's fully 3D models, which are not the highest of quality if we're being honest, and it doesn't hold a candle to the hand-drawn sprites of Super Robot Wars, but that's an unfair comparison since it still does an awesome job of recreating the intense action of the Gundam series. The cinematic presentation still outshines most strategy games out there, including Nintendo's own flagship turn-based strategy game. Honestly, Nintendo should get the teams that made this, or preferably Super Robot Wars, to work on the visuals for a Fire Emblem or Advance Wars games, if that was to ever be revived. Leave the planning and programming to intelligent systems, but let Bandai on the battle animations. It especially shines in handheld mode. On the TV, it looks great too, but could do with some anti-aliasing, which is much less obvious on the smaller screen. During some animation, there is a little bit of slowdown depending on the environment that the combat is happening in, but it wasn't enough to detract from uh, from anything. Plus, there was a day one patch that may have smoothed things out somewhat. The audio is pretty excellent. Although I didn't purchase the premium sound edition, I was still thoroughly impressed with the rocking tunes that were presented during the skirmishes. Most of the music, I believe, are from the animes themselves. For example, if one dude from a series attacks, his theme will play but a dude from another series attacks then it will change to their theme. I love this idea and it really brings the crossovers to life and the personality of each Gundam series. Value is always the biggest sticking point when it comes to these import mech games. The cost is sky high, a premium price that even we wince at despite knowing it's for a review for you guys. It's available both digitally and physically with English, but not in the West. On the Japanese eShop, you can get the standard edition for 9,020 yen, which is around $82, £63, and €75. Euros. And you can get the premium sound edition, which is 13,200 yen, which in Western money is $120, £93, and €109. Euros. Wow. However, if you're like me and you follow our channel, you know that you can get the physical goods on this one, which is always recommended in our eyes, even if it's just for resale value alone once you've had your fun with it. All of the versions available, either Asian or Japanese, have English on the cartridge. If you want to purchase this digitally, then you'll need some Japanese eShop credit, which we've put links to in the description and pinned comment, plus links to all the physical import options that you have available to you. If you use these links and you're buying the game anyways, then it helps the team out massively as we get a small cut. Really is the best way to support us and allows us to keep doing these import reviews for you guys. Also, as a side note, on my Asian version, you get a couple of download codes inside that you can redeem from the Hong Kong eShop in case you're wondering. One for Mono Eyes Gundams, which is an extra game to download. I believe it's an old Wonderswan color game, which naturally and very sadly is only playable in Japanese. So yeah, you get a free game, but good luck playing it. The other, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's just extra vehicles or mechs in the main game. If you buy the Japanese physical copy, I have no idea what you're gonna get. Is it worth the high import price? Well, it's debatable. For me, I've enjoyed my time with it so far, and it seems like such a massive game that I find it difficult to say it's not worth it, despite the higher than normal price tag. You'll probably get 100 hours out of this or more, full of Gundam story, characters, music, and so on, which is where the real value is. You're paying for the Gundam universe, and that's what you need to look at. Perhaps if you're not so into the series, then maybe other games may be better value for your buck, like Super Robot Wars or even more readily available Fire Emblem. I know that you're going to ask about a potential Western release, and the cold hard truth is that it's highly, highly unlikely due to licensing hurdles. It's still more possible than Super Robot Wars, but that's not saying much. I wouldn't wait around on this one. Either get it from the Japanese eShop or be awesome and import physically. Where does this one rank on the essential import scale? Well, you'll have to watch my recent video of ranking all the best Nintendo Switch imports this year. It's well worth the watch just to find out where I place this game. Overall, there's no doubt in my mind that Crossrays is a great game. A great game for fans of the vast Gundam universe. 
For the uninitiated, it's a tougher game to absorb, thanks to the specific story threads and scattershot approach to game mechanics, but still, even if you're not into the franchise but still wanting a good strategy time with some awesome mechs blasting each other, then get Super Robot Wars T. Jokes aside, this is a fine option for import and I had a great time with it, despite me scratching my head the majority of the time. And I love the improved difficulty and options available on this one. While it may not be my favourite anime mech strategy game from Bandai, it's still one I'm very happy to have in my collection. An 8 out of 10. Okay guys, be sure to check out my review of Super Robot Wars T. It's a game that kicked this all off for me, and for me is the pinnacle of what's to offer in terms of this genre. It kicks ass. Also check out my video of all the best imports that came out this year in 2019. It's well worth a look. We'll see you guys over there. Take care.